All right, Mr. Truck, we're here. Gas time. Yes. Diesel time. It's finally time to put the refreshed and redesigned 2024 Duramax big turbo diesel V8 in a pickup truck to the Denver 100 test. This is the cool test. The EPA doesn't dare do this test, but TFL truck does. So we've done the Ford F-350 recently on a long trip, kind of cross country. Yeah, Detroit. Uh, yes, Detroit to Denver. So we'll show you some of the results from there. Now we're doing the GM, brand new Duramax. Yeah. And a little bit later, uh, we'll do the Ram Cummins awesome. as well. But this Chevy's a 2024. How do you beat that? Let's do it. Look at that, the big diff tank, the bigger diesel. Look at the whole size of that hole. You can put a semi nozzle in there. Yes, but we're, uh, of course, as always, at Sinclair Fuel Station. TFL runs on Sinclair. They're one of our partners. I know, I'm gonna get that app. Does that look like a cool deal to get, to get money off your fuel? Yes, DinoPay app, check it out. Use the link in the description below. Um, you can save some money. You could also find the closest stations to you with the best deals. And uh, they also have uh, additives in the fuel to make your engine run better. Well, that's cool. Well, these, 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 these are all over the place. Sinclair's got stations everywhere I go. Go, gadget. Right. So as always, we're gonna wait 30 seconds and top off. As you have commented before, there's a little bit of frothing in the diesel, right? So kind of like beer. Yeah, but you don't drink it, right? No, you don't drink diesel, not very often. <laughs> so we want to have it settle and have an even nice fill up so we can just get on our highway. There. Boy, what did I put an ounce it's, in there? It's a few ounces. We're topped off. So the Denver 100 loop is a hundred and what, 12 miles a loop, ring road, all the way around Denver, Colorado. Pretty cool. And some of it's on toll ridge, some of it's 70 miles an hour, some of it's 60, some of it's 65. So it's a highway loop. Yes, it is. Let's go. It's all roads. All right, Mr. Truck, let's reset our trip meter. This truck just came back from drag racing, right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> So you can also see that video where we drag raced the Ram 3500 versus Chevy versus Ford Dooley's on alttfl.com. Awesome, fun race. So recently you and I did, we had another 2024 GM Duramax. Yeah. Yes. And we towed a trailer. That was a good one. So we can actually show you guys a clip of this video of that video right now so you can get a sense for exactly how this new Duramax does with a trailer behind it. Yes. The truck is saying 11.2. 11.2 after 112 miles. 9.768. All right, Mr. Truck. So the official distance for the loop is 112 miles. Okay. 112 divide by what is it 9.768 right yep you're right you've got it down 11.5 there you go <laughs> i knew it was going to do better than 11 that's great yeah so that's another thing you know the epa of course doesn't test anything with trailers but then they don't do the heavy duties so you know we got to give you all the information we can i don't want anybody else doing this running around and spending all that money on fuel just to get a test and it's a good test so we're filling the gap. Whatever the EPA doesn't want to do, that's what we do. With big pickups. Yep. Now that's how close we are. We just drove like a tenth of a <laughs> mile and we're on the highway. I know, that's just so cool. That way we're getting most all highway miles because you know, sometimes it's 75 miles an hour, sometimes it's 70, sometimes it's 65, and probably sometimes it's 60. Yeah, so we'll be following all the uh, speed limits, of course. Yeah, and this is kind of real world, right? Well, it real is. World. It is. It gives you just a little bit of variance, but it's not really like city driving at all. We're all flying down the highway. General Motors updated this engine for 2024. That's cool. Yeah, this now has 470 horsepower and 975 pound-feet of torque. So that's a little bit of a jump. Yeah, it's a healthy jump over the previous L5P yeah. uh, turbo diesel. I think it's 25 more horsepower and 65 more foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, by golly, that's what my notes say. Well, that's why, because we also did a night gauntlet with this truck, right? Yes, we did. So we're getting all kinds of tests with all these trucks. Yeah, 
and they did a lot of fuel work so fuel delivery work injection piston design so that's how they bumped the power up they also have a new controller on the engine right oh, yeah uh, but they also said it should be more efficient cool does that mean he has more line pressure and all the stuff you were talking about injections and yeah all? and of course multiple injections per cycle right yeah all yeah. that fancy diesel technology yep yeah, and it's got a 36 gallon tank like you know a lot of trucks do. I wish they had a little bigger than that for yeah. a dually, but you know. So last time when Case and I drove that Ford F-350 right. from Detroit to Denver, um, that truck had a 48 gallon tank. Yeah, that's a full size tank. And yeah. I said it was the largest in the segment, but I made a mistake. So well, uh, the viewers pointed that out. Oh, it's the low. It's the highest in the heavy duties. Yeah. So actually, the high, the largest capacity, is actually Ram 3500s with their, uh, you know, long beds. You can get a 50 gallon tank. Wow. As so an they, option. They jump four by two. Yeah. They yeah. beat four by two. Yeah. Well, that's important, right? Because a lot of people use this for business. Well, sure. That's how cabin chassis are. They'll put two tanks on them. You know, kind. Of, that's what you need. You know, to get the work done. You can't be going to the fuel station. Every half a hundred times a day, yeah, right? Yeah, that's ridiculous. So, so, no, this makes sense. I wish this one was bigger, but 36 is what a lot of half tits have gone up to now. But here's the thing if this is much more efficient than the Ford, maybe it doesn't need a bigger tank. <laughs> All right, dude, well, uh, we're going the speed limit, so let's uh, transition towards the tollway and see how it goes. Cool. Are you got wide open throttle, or are you going to speed limit? No, 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 no wide open. Don't break the no, law. No, 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 no. Yeah. construction zone so it's about 65 now so I gotta go down to 65 miles per hour my trip meter says uh, we're at 17.1 wow that's good for point one. but here how about this how about we play a little clip of what happened in the F-350 good um, and um, so you can see exactly what on the highway the F-350 did and then we'll come back here Cool. Now you went to speed limit, didn't you? Yes. Oh, okay. That was also 75. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on on the interstate. Um, on yeah. the interstate. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this first stint uh, was about 258 miles, and I'm gonna give you a preview of what the trip meter is saying. 18.4 mpg. So that could be spot on. It could be off. We won't know until we fill up. I've used about a third of a tank, maybe, maybe not quiet, and it says 550 miles left. That is so cool you can leave a camera on now. Yeah, so this model year, well, 2023 calendar year, Yes. <laughs> most manufacturers are now switching to where you could monitor several cameras while moving. That is so cool. You look at your head, you look at your bed, but they must have changed the laws. That used to be totally illegal. This is so awesome. Yeah, so there's more information. So I, I don't have blind spots, really. No, it's so cool. And then you, you, you turn your blink around with the trailer attached. Yeah. You can see all the way down to the very end of the trailer. You can't do that with mirrors unless your mirrors are illegal. Right, so here's the other thing I wanted to say. Uh, Ford has several driving modes. It has normal, of course, tow haul. It has slippery, but it also has eco. Yes. This one does not have a special eco mode. Right, right. It has tow haul, normal, and off-road. Yeah. So, but hopefully when you're driving normally, it's in its most efficient setting, right? Yeah, you would hope that that's how they would calibrate the computer to think for itself a little and diagnose what you're doing. Yeah. Knows you're not on a trailer trying to be efficient because if you have a trailer, you may have tow haul mode on, then it would probably be different. Right. You want higher RPMs. So there, that's why we're testing this and seeing how it works. Yeah, this is so cool. Because, you know, it's always amazed me with, say, a rivalry between Ford and Chevy, GMC. Yeah. They're always trying to beat each other. And, and Chevy, I've noticed, they do it kind of secretly. They don't tell you. They don't brag about their horsepower or something else. But they still can kick ass, you know, racing them and pulling trainers. So I'm always amazed that they all have different philosophies and how they want to do things. Now, this is a, a 342 axle, right? Yeah, we usually don't mention the axles, but you guys always ask us. Yeah, people ask us a bunch yeah. in the last video, so, so that's what it is. Um, for a diesel GM heavy duty, only one axle ratio, period. Right, and for, for Ford, their, Ford is what, three, three, uh, 
355? Yeah. The Ford, we tested, had a 355. They also offer 410s and 430s. Yeah. In some of their versions of the Super Duty. Right. Um, so Ford 355, this is 342. But both of them have 10 speeds. And I think the rear axle ratio is not as important as it once was. Yeah, it's a lot of gears, 10 gears. Yeah, you have a lot of options in gearing. So yeah. that's what you have. But this also has the, their latest cruise control system. Oh, the adaptive cruise control. Yep. My favorite thing, I guess, is the first time they've done this on their heavy duty. Yep, so you can see right there, adaptive cruise control. And it controls the trailer brakes, everything. That's good. So that's really great for GM. Yeah, it's great with the trailer. You can do the adaptive cruise control because you have a long time. Nobody will let you do that. I think Ford started doing that. But uh, big deal. And this is an eight-foot bed because, of course, this is a dually. Yes. And... The gooseneck ball is more centered over the axle, right? Well, it's in, it's ahead of the axle. Yeah. Where the other ones, you know, that that have what is it? A, a six ten. Yeah, six ten. They are like at least four axles behind the uh, axle. The four. They're four behind, inches. But, yeah, the four inches behind the axle. Yeah. So that you know you're moving your weight around a little bit more toward the back of the truck instead of the front. All right. Well, let's go a little bit further. We'll have a few traffic lights as well to hit. Yeah. And uh, we're going downhill, so it did great shifting for me. Cool. It, it, you want to tell us what it's getting for fuel mileage right now? So right now it's showing 17.6 identical to what Ford had. Wow, that's wild. So who's going to be better? Well, we'll find out. Yeah. We did it, Mr. Truck. Oh, we that's cool. It. We made it back. Denver 100. We made it. Guys, ch check this out. The trip meter says 18.0. This is very exciting. Wow, that'd be cool if it actually is, is accurate. That'd be awesome. And my GPS says we went 110.3 miles. So the truck is pretty accurate, according That's, to the GPS. Wow, this could be the, the best fuel mileage truck in the category. We'll find out. Woo! Okay, let's find. Let's fill up. Mr. Truck, yes, sir. you want to do the honors? Yes. I love your shirt, by the way. Well, thank you, thank you. You're very American. I am. Mr. Chuck, I was going to say, people are going to complain and say... Oh, that we're we scratching it. Yeah, we didn't hang oh, our... Oh, man, find oh, your wait. thing. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know, oh. it's long, barely long enough to get Yeah. It. 30 seconds. <laughs> what? Seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds what? <laughs> 30 seconds, we don't have a thing. Absolutely full, totally full. And precise. Yes, so you want to be as precise. Because this is for science. 30 seconds. Okay. Wow, that was a big top off. <laughs> Thank you. At least one ounce, at least. So the final damage is 6.232 gallons. Let's huh. calculate. So we went. 110.3 miles precisely divide by 6.232 gallons equals 17.7 oh man so it's 0.1 mpg better than the fart is that what it figures out to be wow that, yes it's pretty close one by the way so the ford was a limited edition right fully loaded truck 102,000. Right. this is an ltz so it's not Quiet, fully optioned, but still very well equipped. At what price? Yeah, this was uh, eighty-five thousand six hundred seventy dollars, and you know it's not as loaded as what the high country would be. Curb <laughs> weight has to be a little bit lower on this. Yeah, this is all the all the toys. So it has about fifty-two hundred pounds of payload, and it will tow up to about thirty-one thousand pounds. So there you have it. So right now, it's the king of efficiency. Wow, these are pretty pretty close in there yes between the top end of these trucks all right well thanks for joining us go to oldtfl.com and store.mrtruck.com for all your truck and trailer accessories all right so we went 685.1 miles divide by 38.854 equals 17.6 so the truck was saying 18.1 so it's close-ish. This is better than Nathan and I got in the Ram by quite a lot, by about two MPG plus. All 
Alright, Mr. Truck, we settled in. This is 75 mile an hour stretch. Yep. So we went from 65 to 75. So it's now easy going. But I want to discuss this topic, the transmission topic. Okay. Because there's a lot of controversy. A lot of about controversy. It. Yes. So whenever we talk about GM and Ford and their 10 speeds, right. people say, oh, it's the same transmission. But it's a little bit more complicated than that, right? Well, the programming's a little different. I think you're right. I think the basic transmission is the same for half tons. Well, they collaborated, right? Yeah, they do a few different things on tow haul mode, whatever that programming is. So the, here's the way I understand it. It's for, for light duty trucks, F-150 and Silverado 1500s, right? right? They collaborated on the design of the 10 speed. They have press releases about it. They talked about it. Sure. And then they said they tuned them differently because one made it, you know, to a V8 engine, right? Right. GM. And the other made it to the EcoBoost, right? So they said yes. they tuned them a little true. bit differently, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. But then heavy duties are a little bit different. Well, we think they are. We think they are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so do you want to explain the Allison part of this? Because it's a little bit confusing. GM used to own Allison. That's Not true. anymore. That's true. And Allison's always been the big transmission company. You know, and they didn't. They used to have really shift hards on those big trucks they were in. You know, the ambulances and. And fire, fire trucks, trucks school everything. buses, and then when they put them in, they put their T1000 in their 20 or 2500, 3500 GM trucks. They actually lowered the line pressure because people were complaining about hard shifting they were, and that also made this. So anyway, that's good or bad. We'll see how that works out. That's the history. That's the history of it. And then you know now, and I know you have GM for a while there, and they split up. They kept that one factory just for the the pickup transmissions. And now it's confusing because they'll say branded by Allison. Oh, right. And then I guess what, what your, your story is on that is that... Is that GM designed it, uh -huh. uh, this 10 speed, uh, the way they wanted to, and they gave it to Allison Company, and Allison Company certified it right. for their durability standards. So they tested it. They tested it They in the real world and on the dynos, right? Okay. And they were able to put their brand on it. Okay. Allison branded. Okay. Which people care about, right? That's a good name. That's true. That's uh, true. Ford didn't do that. Ford, well, Ford did the, well, there may be similar designs. Yeah, I've got a story about that. I'm still yeah. working on it. A, a transmission mechanic that I trust very well, he works on these all the time, and we're going to do some videos of him rebuilding the Allison, of him rebuilding the Ford transmission, and rebuilding what Jim was using. But you know, according to that rumor, which we're still waiting to verify, the transmission, the 10 speeds, and the heavy duties, and the super duties yeah. are the same. They're just difference in the pan and maybe some programming. Because you know, if, if Ford and GM were collaborating on a half ton, why would they not want to do it on a heavy duty? Or maybe take those learnings, right? Yeah. So what, that, what they've learned. That's what I've got to do. When we narrow down and do that. When I do my video on rebuilding those transmissions, we're going to try to see what's different if they are the same. If that's just the big secret in the industry that maybe they're both Allison's. I don't know because they'll be Allison branded. They won't be a true Allison transmission. Right. So that'd be a Ford one and a Chevy one, very similar. So, uh, Allison is its own company. They're based on the, out of Indianapolis. Yes. Um, and I was with them recently at the, the work truck show. They built their own transmissions. They have a nine speed automatic right yeah. now. They used to have seven speeds. Uh, they build now electric axles. Right. right? So th th they have a lot, they have the, their whole lineup of products. Oh yeah. Transmissions and axles well, and, and many yeah. more. They're big in construction. You know, Allison's are all over. They're big in a lot of trucks. And so, you know, don't know what's going to happen next, but we're going to try to dig some of this deeper and see where it's at. But I don't remember if they put those in uh, RVs, you know, the Class A's, because they used to. And, you know, Caterpillar was going to start building some of those too. And then they kind of got away from being on the road to an off-road company. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll find Allison's just about everywhere when they need heavy-duty transmissions. That's what they're known for. But here's what I know. Both the Super Duty transmission and this one, they shift very smoothly. Yeah. Just un almost imperceptible uh, smooth uh, shifts. And they're good. They feel good. That's true. And if they were working together on that heavy-duty transmission, 
it would make sense. It would save both some money. But, you know, it's probably it's a secret. So if we find out something... Because you might... have to have a competitive advantage, right? That's true. That's true. So that would be interesting. We're going to do some research on that and try to narrow this down because there's always something going on in the automotive industry that, you know, they don't want you to find out about. So we'll see if this is one of those, the occurrences.